For those of you who have not had a chance to meet, my name is Daniel McMullen. I'm the recently retired special agent in charge of the Jackson Division of the FBI. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to have an opportunity to come back to Mississippi to be a part of this very, very special occasion. And I want to thank, on behalf of the FBI and the Jackson Division, all of you for being with us this morning. We have a number of special guests joining us today, including FBI Deputy Director Mark Giuliano, Mississippi Attorney General Jim Hood, former Mississippi Governor William Winter, Mrs. Murley Evers Williams, the Honorable Tony Yarber, Mayor of Jackson, Mississippi, the Honorable Reverend James Young, Mayor of Philadelphia, Mississippi, Dr. Sid Bondurant, Legislative Liaison and Policy Advisor to Governor Phil Bryant, and FBI Chaplain Dr. David Ard. Next, I am pleased to introduce the Mayor of Jackson, Mississippi, Tony Yarber. Throughout the years, Mayor Yarber has been a steadfast advocate for his community. He uses his background in education, his experiences, and his beliefs as a driving force behind his passion for the development of all of Jackson's communities. His passion is self-evident in making this a great city. He is a good friend of the FBI, and we are honored to have him here today. Please welcome Mayor Yarber. Let me begin by saying uh, welcome uh, on behalf of the more than 175,000 people that represent the greatest city on this side of heaven. We want to welcome you to the city of Jackson. Uh, today, I am uh, humbled uh, to be here. I'm humbled because uh, I recognize early by looking at the people who I'm surrounded by that I am the least of you all. However, I am uh, the greatest because of the sacrifices that have been made uh, because of you. Today we're joined by uh, my colleague, uh, Councilman Charles Tillman, uh, members of the Jackson Police Department, uh, actually the leaders of that department, Chief Horton is here, Assistant Chief Vance, Deputy Chief Barlow, Deputy Chief Wallace. They are also, um, we have Councilman Priester who is here. Uh, these are the representatives who understand full well what collaboration with this particular agency means. We understand full well uh, that June 12, 1963, in my opinion, set in motion the indelible mark that the FBI would e eventually make in the city of Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, it was uh, in 1964, July 10th, that you all planted your flag in Jackson, but I'm almost confident, I'm almost sure, that it was because of a man named Megger Evers, uh, his life, his legacy, that ensured that this agency would be here and that we would have an opportunity to partake. And so on your 50th, we want to say thank you. I want to say that we appreciate the efforts that happened in 1989. We appreciate uh, the opportunity for you understanding that there are things that went on in this city that without a careful microscopic look, that we, they will probably still be being looked over. And so as you go forward in the next 50 years, and we're counting on another 50 years, that the partnership between the Federal Bureau of Investigations and the city of Jackson, that that partnership would not only be strengthened, but that partnership would lead to a city where justice reigns and where all people are counted and no one is left out. So thank you and again, welcome. Next, please join me in welcoming Dr. Sid Bondurant who is here to present a proclamation on behalf of Governor Phil Bryant. Dr. Bondurant is a legislative liaison and policy advisor to Governor Phil Bryant. He served in the Mississippi House of Representatives from 2004 to 2012. Dr. Bondurant practiced medicine in Grenada, Mississippi for 27 years until he retired in 2012. He also served as United States Navy Reserve Medical Officer. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sid Bondurant. Thank you, Mr. McMullen. I bring you greetings from Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant. The governor regrets that he was unable to be here today due to a prior commitment uh, on the Gulf Coast uh, where he's going to be for the rest of the day. But I would like to read to you the uh, proclamation written by the, the governor for this day. 
Whereas the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, established a field division to headquarters in Jackson, Mississippi on July the 10th, 1964, and whereas the Jackson Division of the FBI has provided 50 years of service to the citizens of the state of Mississippi, and whereas that service has included successes in numerous national security and criminal investigations in Mississippi, and whereas the FBI has served to protect the civil liberties of the citizens of Mississippi, and whereas the FBI has provided for the education and training of law enforcement officers and first responders in Mississippi, and whereas the FBI has developed effective and productive relationships with federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies throughout the state of Mississippi, and whereas the FBI continues to assist state and local agencies by offering forensic laboratory and technical support, and whereas it is fitting that the state of Mississippi recognize and pay tribute to the Jackson Division of the Federal Bureau of Investigation for its contributions to the safety and security of its citizens on the occasion of its 50th anniversary. Now, therefore, I, Phil Bryant, Governor of the State of Mississippi, hereby proclaim July 7th through the 13th, 2014 as FBI Week in the State of Mississippi and encourage all our citizens to join in extending our best wishes to all who have served and are currently serving in the Jackson Division of the FBI on this, its 50th anniversary. In witness whereof, I have hereto set my hand and caused the great seal of the state of Mississippi to be affixed, done in the city of Jackson on this, the fifth day of June, the year of our Lord, 2014, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 238th, signed Phil Bryant, Governor. I would, I'd like to present this to Daniel McMullen, who for many years headed the FBI in Jackson and has recently retired uh, from the state of Mississippi to the FBI in Jackson, Mississippi. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I now have the honor of introducing Mississippi Attorney General Jim Hood. During his eight years as a third judicial district attorney in North Mississippi, he tried more than 100 jury trials he has personally prosecuted several historic cases, including the 2005 trial of Edgar Ray Killen for the 1964 murders of James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner. He has served as Attorney General of Mississippi since 2004. Please welcome Attorney General Hood. Thank you, Dan, uh, who's recently retired. I'm, uh, we'll, you'll be sorely missed. We appreciate your service here. Um, I'm honored to be here uh, among such uh, esteemed uh, civil rights icons as uh, Ms. Evers and, and Governor Winter. Um, and I'm, I'm also lucky because I don't have to speak after those two. Um, I've warned Mark Giuliano, and we're, we're, I, I'm honored to have you down here, and we're glad to have you, but he is, he's gonna be batting cleanup, so he has a tall order uh, to complete by uh, speaking after uh, such distinguished uh, members of the panel. Um, you know, my heroes have always been those who strap on a gun every day and go out and fight to protect us. Um, that was instilled in me at an early age. My father was a county prosecuting attorney in North Mississippi in the early 70s. And, um, you know, back then, the county attorney was basically the assistant DA. They took all the heat in the county, and the DA drifted in when it was time for a trial. Um, so with that came the animus of people that you had to prosecute. It was a dry county. We had gambling. We had uh, drugs were just coming into our county, and our family endured a lot of threats. Um, and um, our home was burned in 1973. We never really knew if who uh, the, the crooks took. You know, they claimed responsibility for it. Um, but you know, in the end, we had a sheriff that got elected that came in and cleaned our county up. And you know, law enforcement uh, used to be all men, and now it, it's women uh, have have been my heroes. Um, I I had the uh, opportunity, you know, as DA, with working with a lot of victims. And I was lucky enough uh, to have been uh, in a position to do my duty 
and try the uh, civil rights case and the uh, Mississippi burning case back in 2005. You know, our history books didn't contain anything about that history. I talked to people my age in other states. I was two years old when those murders occurred, and they had it in their history books to know what happened here. When it came time for me to try it, I had to learn it, you know, from, from th that time forward. And I read a lot of books, and I recognized uh, heroes like Megar Evers and people that gave their lives, like the, the three victims in Philadelphia, that gave their lives for, for us to move forward. And those, you know, are my heroes. Those that have, that have uh, fought to make change and law enforcement that has worked with them. You know, I had the opportunity during that trial to talk to FBI agents that came down here, many of them from the north. They, um, you know, they didn't know what to expect when they got here. Uh, you know, one of them who testified in the case went into the courthouse. There were eight of them. There were two cars, two FBI agents. They went in the courthouse to talk to the sheriff, and nobody was outside. It was dark after they had their conversation with him. They came out, and there were anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 people surrounding their cars, and they had to, had to drive out of that uh, intimidation. They endured staying in hotel rooms where there was only well, one but one door, and there were threats. People driving through the parking lot that were threatening to throw out Molotov cocktails. You know, it, it was a time of strife, and even for strong FBI agents, you know, it was, uh, uh, it was a tough time for them. And I appreciate all that, that the federal government, the Department of Justice did for our state when our local law enforcement wouldn't or couldn't take action. They worked tremendously, and that, as a result of all their labors, that's how I was able to, to try that case back in 2005 and uh, settle some old wrongs. And, you know, we've continued um, to work closely with, with the FBI. Um, in addition to all the, the things that they did in that case and to help our state uh, have a better image, uh, we're continuing that. And in the future, you know, the, the question is 50 years from now, going forward, we're going to have to work more closely with the FBI and the Department of Justice, particularly in the area of cybercrime. I have investigators here that are assigned to a task force in which our office works closely uh, with the FBI and, and cybercrime. And going into the future, that is going to be the wave of the future. Uh, for criminals, as they can all y'all hear me in the back? Okay, this this was up pretty high, but the lady who sang, I started to lower it for, her, but she sang so loud and so good, it was uh, I didn't want her to lower it. But um, you know, going into the future and dealing with cybercrime, it's 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 a cost to our country uh, of the theft that occurs on the internet. It's it's over a hundred times more in the cost. Uh, to victims than other theft crimes all put together, 100 times more. So in the future, we're going to see things that are going to really change the way we operate, even more so than the Internet. Things like 3D printing. You know, it, it, they're going to be printing guns. Uh, right now, there's probably one in this area where they print products for computers or whatever, you know, just type little plastic things. But in the future, they'll we'll be printing cell phones. We'll be printing tennis shoes. You know, it's going to change the way labor is, is uh, handled with China and other areas about the country. But it's going to also bring a lot of mischief. You know, we'll be printing some kind of, some foods are able to now to actually print that in your home. You order the software. And th that kind of change with technology is going to bring forth a lot of dangers. And I salute uh, those who uh, have fought uh, to establish this foothold of an office here uh, in Jackson during a very tough time. And I think it's, it's great that we have such a beautiful building named after those citizen victims, those who actually forced and fought for change uh, in our state. It, it has been a, a great impact. There are those who are on this uh, uh, podium that have actually lived it. So I won't go any further into uh, the, the history of, of that time period. I, I prefer to sit and listen to uh, those that I've really respected. I know Governor Winter uh, is always one of the best speakers. I've always encouraged him to teach me how he does it. 
you know, but uh, he says there's no trick to it. You know, as a DA, I learned to make notes on a piece of paper before my closing argument. So that was, that was my speech uh, to the jury, and that's continued to this day. Again, it is an honor uh, to be here on this, this podium and be invited here. And I want to say thanks to all of, the, all of you uh, federal officers who have worked with our local law enforcement and appreciate all you've done for our state. Thank you, and God bless you. I'm pleased to introduce FBI Deputy Director Mark Giuliano. Deputy Director Giuliano began his FBI career as a special agent in 1988. Since then, he has served in Washington and Atlanta field offices and in several capacities at FBI headquarters, most recently as Executive Assistant Director of the National Security Branch. As Deputy Director, he oversees all FBI investigative and intelligence activities, both domestically and internationally among other key functions. Please welcome FBI Deputy Director Mark Giuliano. It is really an honor and a privilege to be here today. I am humbled, as the mayor had said at the beginning, to be on this podium with people who have walked the walk and talked the talk. It is truly amazing to look at the history in this great state. As Director Comey noted in his opening remarks, the years leading up to the Freedom Summer became increasingly violent. Black Mississippians, Mississippians and civil rights activists regularly disappeared. In 1955, 14-year-old Emmett Till was beaten, shot, and lynched simply for whistling at a white woman in a store in Money, Mississippi. When James Meredith enrolled in the University of Mississippi, which was bought up earlier today in October of 1962, President Kennedy was required to send 5,000 federal troops to the state of Mississippi to quell the riots that broke out there. And in 1963, NAACP Field Secretary Medgar Evers was assassinated outside his home in Jackson by Klansman Byron Della Beckwith. In 1964, the disappearance of the Freedom Summer Volunteers, James Cheney, Adam Go Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwarner, was the tipping point. This brought the attention of the world and the attention of the FBI to Mississippi. Director Hoover handpicked Ray Moore to serve as the special agent in charge of the new field office and to lead the Mississippi burning investigation. According to a local veteran journalist, Bill Miner, there was only one reliable law enforcement agency in Mississippi at the time, and that was the FBI headed by Roy Moore. The Jackson Division was born of the struggle of the civil rights and the violence that defined that era. But the division's commitment to civil rights did not simply end in the 1960s. Over the years, the Jackson Division provided investigative assistance and technical expertise to state and local prosecutors in a number of civil rights era cold cases. In 1998, Klansman Sam Bowers was sent to prison for life for the 1966 firebombing of the home of Forest County NAACP President Vernon Dammer. Mr. Dammer died as a result of those injuries he sustained in that fire. And you heard a little bit about that earlier today from the governor. And on June 21st, 2005, 41 years to the day after the disappearance of James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Mickey Schwarner, Edgar Ray Killen, was convicted on three counts of manslaughter for his role in those very terrible murders. We as the FBI have also pursued federal charges in civil rights cases whenever possible, including the 2003 trial of Ernest Henry Avance for the 1966 murder of Ben Chester White in the Homochitan National Forest, the first such federal prosecution. A few years later, in June 2007, James Ford Seal was convicted of the kidnapping and murder of Charles Moore and Henry D., two young black teenagers who disappeared in May of 1964. Their decomposed bodies were found as authority search for Cheney, Swarner, and Goodman. Investigators reopened the case when it was determined that D. and Moore had been kidnapped, taken to the Homochit National Forest, and then driven across state lines to Louisiana. In each of these cases, justice may have been long delayed, but it was not denied because the employees here in Jackson simply refused to give up. 
The division has, of course, been responsible for scores of other investigations beyond those of civil rights crimes. Jackson helped capture a number of fugitives on the FBI's 10 most wanted list, including Charles Everett Hughes in 1981, Stephen Ray Stout in 1988, and most recently, Adam Mays in 2012. In 1978, the Jackson Division launched a successful undercover sting to pinpoint corrupt officials in the state of Mississippi. As a result, the Soto County Sheriff Harvey Hamilton was the first sitting sheriff in the entire Southeast to be convicted of federal racketeering charges. In Operation Pretense, lost in the 19, launched in the 1980s following a call-in tip, looked at claims that companies had to participate in, quote, the good old, ba good old boy network paying kickbacks in order to do business in the great state of Mississippi. In September 1987, Judge Vincent Sherry and his wife Margaret were married and murdered in their home by the so-called Dixie Mafia. Local authorities worked the investigation for more than two years to no avail. The FBI opened its investigation in 1989, which would last for more than eight years. At the final trial in 1997, Dixie Mafia lawyer, lawyer Paul Hallett was sentenced to 18 years in prison. The kingpin who ordered the hits, Kersey McCord Nix, and the hitman who actually carried out the murders, each received life sentences. I could go on all day from investigations of one of America's most powerful trial attorneys, Dickie Scruggs, for attempted bribery of a circuit court judge, to the recent investigation of James Everett Dutsky, a Tupelo man who mailed rice and lace threatening letters to a number of public officials to include President Obama. As the FBI has changed to meet the threats of the day, so too has the Jackson Division. And because no one agency can tackle all the threats we face, this division has embraced its many, many partners. From the Joint Terrorism Task Force to Violent Crimes and Safe Streets Task Forces, to the Mississippi Cybercrimes Fugitive Center, agents, officers, deputies, analysts, and professional staff are working shoulder to shoulder, day in and day out. This division also works hard to provide up-to-date training for its law enforcement partners, such as the active shooter trainings we have conducted across the state in the state of the arms farm facility that has recently opened in Pearl. And of course, so many of you are here today as a testament to Jackson's dedication to community partnerships. Partnerships that help us better understand the different needs and the different perspectives of the diverse citizens that we all are sworn to serve. It is customary at events like this to say things like, look how far we've come. Look what we've accomplished. And while that is true, we still have a very long way to go. We see people of different cultures, of different races, of different religions, in prominent positions here in Jackson, throughout the state of Mississippi, and throughout this great country. And that's a really good thing. But as we mark the anniversary of the Jackson Division and of the Freedom Summer, we must recognize every single person who marched for freedom, even at great risk to their own safety and their own lives. We must recognize every person who helped someone register to vote, even in the face, face of threats and intimidation. Every person who stood up and said, enough is enough, and it's time for equality. We must recognize every person who took important and meaningful steps, both large and small, toward liberty and justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. That's what the Jackson Division stands for. It's what the FBI stands for. And we are proud to be part of America's history, but more proud to be part of its future. We're recognizing the 50th anniversary of continuous service of our Jackson office here in Mississippi. It was created in 1964 in the midst of Freedom Summer and all of those civil rights struggles that we remember. Today, we're, we're recognizing the service of the office and the sacrifices of the Bureau people here and all those who have been involved in all that the FBI does in Mississippi for the last 50 years. I think what we take away from this kind of event is the idea that the, the past and the present are leading towards the future and, and the service that the FBI has given in these 50 years is going to continue for the next 50 years.